Looking across any landscape, it is not difficult to recognize that some parts are different from other parts in regard to the plant communities present, especially as to the kinds and amounts of vegetation. To understand this variation across landscape, these different parts are classified into units called ecological sites. This provides all land managers with a consistent framework for understanding lands that may respond similarly to management or disturbance, as well as a basis for suitability and capability of management practices and the ability of these lands to sustain productivity. This tutorial will show you how to access the ecological site information system, as well as the different sections of ecological site descriptions. Ecological site descriptions are housed by the Natural Resource Conservation Service, and approved reports can be accessed when the e within the ecological site information system. The easiest way to do this is to open your favorite web browser and do a search for ecological site information system. What you want to choose is the site that says Ecological Site Information System and is from the USDA.gov. Once you click on that, it will bring you to the Ecological Site Information System. Today we want to find our Ecological Site Description, so we'll click on the link Ecological Site Description. This brings us to the Ecological Site Description website. It gives us an Ecological Site Information System, or ESIS, user guide, and you can read that if you so choose. Today we are going to look for approved ESD, or Ecological Site Description Reports, so we're going to click this link here. This brings us to a, an Ecological Site Description page where we need to choose our MLRA, or our Major Land Resource Area, and the state that our Ecological Site is in. MLRAs, or Major Land Resource Areas, are just geographical associated land resource units. They have similar geology, climate, soils, biological resources, and land use. In this case, we're going to first select our state, and we'll be using Wyoming today. Once that is done, it'll show all the MLRAs found in Wyoming. Today we will choose 5058B click Submit. This brings up all the approved ecological site description reports within that MLRA. The MLRA is 058B, the type is R, which is rangeland, and then it gives us an ID number as well as the site name. Today we will, working, we will be looking at R058BY122WY. All this means is that it's rangeland, it's in 058BY MLRA, the site number ID is 122, and the state is Wyoming. What comes up is the first page, or the first description page, and it gives you the ecological site name, the site type, the site ID, and the major land resource area that it is in. It also then gives us a map of where that MLRA is in Wyoming. This is just the general report section. We will go through all these sections. The next section is physiographic features. This is basically what the land looks like on a whole. So this side occurs on gently undulating rolling land. So if you were out on the ecological site, that's what it would look like. It gives us the elevation, the slope, if it floods or ponds, and if there is an aspect influence on this site. The next section is climatic features. This talks about everything from annual precipitation, wind speed, the gr wind gro plant growth begins and ends, the frost free and freeze free periods, and mean annual air temperature. The next section is water features, and this gives a description of influencing water features. In this case, there are no influencing water features found on this site. If there was, it would talk about the stream type here. The next section is soil features. This talks about how deep the soil is, how well drained or permeable the soil is, and the layers that are most influential to plant communities. It 
also gives us information on the soil series correlated to this site. And the it talks about soil texture, soil surface fragments, and subsurface fragments, so the rock fragments that are found in that soil, whether it is moderately drained or well drained. It then talks about the depth, the available water capacity, the electrical conductivity, which is just the saline the saltiness of the soil, and then the soil reaction, which is the pH of the soil. The next section is plant communities. And this is probably one of the most um, important sections of the ecological site description when planning, grazing, or other management. It talks about the ecological dynamics of this site. So how the site responds to disturbing disturbance, such as grazing or, or building or mining. It then gives us a state and transition diagram and talks about all the different plant communities that can be found on this site and how they transition from one to another. It then gives us information on each plant community found in the state and transition mo model. In the historic climax plant community, which can be determined by finding this HCPC on the diagram, this is the plant community that was here before European settlement. In this section, it gives the plants common and scientific name and the annual pounds per acre for each plant. It only does this for the historic climax plant community. All the other plant communities just talk about the ecological dynamics of that plant community. The next section is the site interpretations. This talks about the animal community in the area. It talks about the wildlife, so the types of wildlife you would see and how each plant community affects that type of wildlife or the wildlife in general. It then talks about the grazing interpretations. These ecological site descriptions give us plant community production care and carrying capacity in AUMs per acre. These numbers should be used cautiously. One should be out on the ground measuring annual pounds of, or annual pounds per acre to determine animal unit months per acre and the grazing carrying capacity of the property. It also then gives us plant preference by animal kind. So it talks about all the different kinds of animals that can be found on this, pro on this land and then gives the common name of the plant as well as the scientific name what plant part is eaten, and then whether it's undesirable, desirable, preferred, or not eaten during different months of the year. This section is quite lengthy and includes wildlife and domestic livestock. It then goes on to talk about hydrology functions. So this is just how water affects this site. Recreational uses, this, this talks about what types of recreational opportunities are available to this site. So in this case, hunting opportunities for upland game species, and then aesthetic value that appeals to visitors due to plant variety of plants that bloom. If there were wood products on this site, it would talk about here. And if there were other products that were of importance to land managers, they would be talked about here. The next section is supporting information. This gives us the associated sites that are in the proximity to this ecological site description or this ecological site. So this site can be adjacent to clay sites, lowland sites, overflow sites, sandy sites, and shallow loamy sites. It also gives similar sites. So the similar site is loamy in the 15 to 17 inch precipitation. Remember here we are only in the 10 to 14 inch precipitation in the current ecological site we're looking at. It talks about other states that have used this ecological site description in their state. It gives an inventory of data references. So it basically it references the data that was used to um, write and develop this ecological site description and state and transition model. It gives us other references and then it gives us the author of the site and who approved the site. Typically the ecological sites are written and developed by range management specialists for the Natural Resource Conservation Service. They are then improved by the state range land specialist for the Natural Resource Conservation Service. The next section would be this rangeland health reference sheet. In this case, this ecological site does not have a rangeland health reference sheet, but if it did, it would give us information on how to determine if 
the range site we were looking at or the ecological site we were looking at was in good rangeland health or not. The next section is the complete report. If you click on this, it brings up the entire all these sections into one document or one website, so you don't have to click through everything. So it gives us the general, the physiographic features, climatic features, water features, soil features, plant communities, and so on. This is a great way to get all the information so you can save it to your computer. To do that, just once you have clicked on complete report, just click HTML printable format. This opens a new window. Once this has loaded, you can then click Save Page As and save this to your computer wherever you would like. You can also print this report by clicking Print. However, I recommend not doing this until you know how long those reports are. They can be quite lengthy. If you just want to print or save one section of the report, just click on that section you want to print. For example, if we just want to print or save plant the plant community sections, you just click on that one section, click HTML printable format, and follow the same, in, same directions, either save page as or print. So that is how you get your ecological site description. If you would like to further explore ecological site descriptions in this MLRA, just click Return to Report Selection screen. You can then click any of these reports and go through it just like I have shown you. If you do not know the specific ecological site you are looking for, you can correlate ecological sites to specific areas of known land by using the NRCS or Natural Resource Conservation Service Web Soil Survey. Please check out a previous wild range cast for information on how to use this tool. If you would like to look at other ecological site descriptions within other MLRAs or states, just click approved ESD reports and it'll bring you back to this page. Ecological site descriptions are used by different types of land managers for different activities. They are working documents that can be changed and edited as new information arises. If you have questions or need more information on ecological site descriptions, do not hesitate to contact your local Natural Resource Conservation Service or Extension Office. This has been Ashley Garls with the University of Wyoming Extension. Thank you for watching.